Over the weekend, the Carolina Hurricanes were able to get a 3-0 win over their Metro Division rival, New York Islanders. Find out how they did it and where the Hurricanes stand right now in terms of injuries in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Kaniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you're listening to Locked On Hurricanes on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Hurricanes your first listen of this Monday afternoon. And don't forget to follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Hurricanes and myself on Twitter at Jared Ellis underscore 96 and subscribe to the show on YouTube. And folks, the Carolina Hurricanes were able to bounce back from a four to three loss in Anaheim with a three nothing win over the New York Islanders on Saturday. Now, if you remember last week, one thing I was concerned about was the long breaks in between games. And yeah, the Hurricanes, they're able to get the point in overtime in Anaheim. But ultimately, it was a trap game and they fell victim to that trap. And they were able to bounce back big over the New York Islanders and facing, you know, some big adversity in that game as well, because they were without Jesper Foss and Sebastian Ajo. Sebastian Ajo out with a lower body injury and Jesper Foss undisclosed as to what was going on with him. So the Hurricanes ended up going 11-7 and they had recalled Max Lajoie from Chicago uh, before this game. And, you know, historically, you know, we always get a little uh, hesitant whenever we hear that the Hurricanes are going 11-7 because typically they're not very good. And they struggle big time whenever they go 11-7. We all know it. We've all seen it. We've talked about it in the show a lot over the years. So, you know, folks were rightfully worried heading into this game because of track record of 11-7. But the Hurricanes, they were able to come out big uh, with this game. They got the 3-0 win, like I said. Paul Statsny got his first goal as a Hurricane that actually counted, uh, which was really good because you know with him a lot of folks had been very critical of him of him just you know not showing up really yeah yeah he you know had some assists and whatnot but in terms of you know what you know the hurricanes you know needed for him they you know kind of expecting him to be a guy that could play kind of up and down the lineup and score some goals and he hadn't been doing that and let's hope that this wasn't a one-off fluke goal uh, and he can continue this trajectory he was playing on the top line with Steph Jarvis and Martin Natchez in this game which I think was helpful uh, because he was playing with two of the best players on the team and you know, able to you know have some offensive opportunities you know with that goal it came off of a Andre Sveshkov pass i believe it Svech was involved in i forget if it was a Svech, a blocked Svech shot or a Svech pass but you know, he was able to you know finally get rewarded after you know all this time here with the team uh yes Spiri Kotniemi was also able to show up on the score sheet as well another guy that folks had been kind of critical of uh and you know like why is he there and, and him just not living up to people's expectations, which I think, you know, was harsh uh, and, you know, needs to have time. And, you know, I hope that this is one that you can continue to get rolling. And it, it seems that, you know, he has some momentum on his side. He looked really good you know, in this game against the Islanders. And I hope uh, things can continue for him. You know, Statsny and Koten Yemi both, you know, with Aho likely going to be out for a little bit, you know, it's going to create more opportunities for those guys, and not just them, other guys as well. You have Seth Jarvis, Marty Natchez, Svech, Stahl, everyone. And I hope that 
they're able to take advantage of those because those are two guys that folks have been looking at a lot of not living up to their expectations. And of course, Jordan Stahl also showing up on the score sheet there in that game against the Islanders and Piotr Kachekov getting his second shutout of his career against the Islanders. He didn't have a lot of work to do. It was only 16 saves. So the Hurricanes defense really showed up and played their butts off. And, you know, I'm glad that, you know, he was able to uh, get rewarded with another shutout. He's the third rookie goalie in Hurricanes and Whalers history to have multiple shutouts with the last being uh, Alex and Delkovich just a couple years ago. And now with that, uh, Kochekov is really making his case to be the guy uh, and, you know, being the number one goalie. Uh, going on if you remember you know he signed that extension for with the team and now he has given the hurricanes 10 or points in 10 of the last 11 games and you know with a 6-1 and 4 record he's playing great hockey and he's definitely between him and auntie ronta right now yeah he's the he's the number one guy uh It'll be interesting to see how things go in Detroit tomorrow. If they roll with Auntie Ranta, it wouldn't necessarily surprise me if they do because uh, Piotr, he's started I think like four or five straight games now. Maybe give him a bit of a rest and you know roll with Ranta in that game. But again, like I said, going into Anaheim, he's the hot set of hands right now. You know, I don't keep playing. You know, he's so... You know, that's one thing you know, there is just he's making his case, you know, like Seth Jarvis did uh, in training camp last year, you know, forced in their hand, you know, to keep playing him. And Jalen Chatfield this year, forcing their hand to keep putting him in the lineup. That's what Piotr's doing. He's forcing their hand like he's playing out of his mind and he's like, I'm I'm the guy. I'm the number one goalie now with Freddie out and. It'll be really interesting to see what happens whenever Freddie comes back of what he decided to do uh, in terms of, you know, it's going to be crazy. Uh, I I don't know if they roll with like three goalies. I don't even know if they could roll with three goalies like they did a couple years ago, but it's, he's fun to watch, man. He is fun to watch. And, I think that the Hurricanes really got really got something. I, I really, really do think that they have something with Piotr. And you know, if they go with him in Detroit, great. You know, awesome. You can't go wrong. And if they sit him, you know, you can't go wrong with that either. But you know, looking back at this Islanders game, yeah, we did get to hear from Rod Brindamore and Brady Shea after the game, and we will hear what they had to say right after this. This episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. At Locked On Hurricanes, we believe that home that your home should be where you and your family feel the safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Hurricanes listeners 40% off a new security system. But don't put this off. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by US News and World Report for a third year in a row. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real so you can get higher priority police response. Simply Safe is whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. HD security cameras for inside and out, smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when the threat is real, and even hazard sensors to detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. 24-7 professional monitoring 
service costs less than one dollar a day that's less than half the price of traditional home security systems with the top rated simply safe app stay safe and stay connected and stay in complete control of your system arm and disarm unlock for a guest access your cameras or adjust system settings anytime anywhere so don't miss your chance to save big on my favorite security system get 40 percent off any new simply safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on nhl today that's simplysafe.com slash locked on nhl there's no safe like simply safe now again we did get to hear from brady shea and rod brendamore following that game against the Islanders. And we're going to start with Brady Shea. And this is what he had to say following that 3 nothing win over the Islanders. Brady, this team enters the game tonight, shorthanded up top, still finds a way to score three goals. What did it say about the win? That was great. I mean, that was probably one of our best games of the year, if not if not the best, just the way that we want to play. Um, for checking, not giving them much, uh, not, many, not many chances, and then, you know, really – taking a game to them and playing below the goal line. It was uh, it was a textbook how we want to play, and uh, it was a great effort by us. Piotr Kochetkov telling his second shutout in the yeah. NHL. What kind of confidence does that create for defensemen when he plays the way he does? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, you know, I think all of our goalies here, we, we have a lot of confidence in them. But uh, with Kuchi, I mean, he's he's been running hot, and um, obviously really – it looks like an athletic goalie and a guy that makes a big save. So um, he's done great, and hopefully just keep that rolling. We hear so much about pulling away from games in the third period. What made the team successful specifically in the final 20 time? Uh, probably the biggest hockey cliche, the get pucks deep and get pucks to the net. I mean, it was pretty uh, evident there that when we, when we did that, we had success, and um, we stayed on top of our guys, and they really didn't have much. So it was, uh, it was a great effort by us, and... Yeah, that was probably uh, the biggest thing. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Chasey. Yeah. So, in listening to Piotr or Brady talking about Piotr, you know, a lot of the same stuff we've been saying for quite a while now of, you know, being really confident in him. He's playing really good right now. And, you know, they supported him in that game against Islanders. And I think that was big. Uh, and because we talked about it many times, uh, sometimes the, the skaters out on the ice forwards and defensemen just leaving the goalie out to dry, whether it's Piotr, whether it was Freddie, auntie, Ned, uh, Reimer, Peter, you know, it, we've talked about it so much. Like they've left so many goalies out to dry over the past few years. You know, this was a game they, they did what they're supposed to do and they didn't let off the gas. You know, you look at the box score, you know, in this game, you know, you know, they created, you know, or they had two goals in that third period. And, you know, that final 20 minutes was big of uh, putting the game away. And then the shots on goal uh, by, you know, the period, you know, the Hurricanes you know, lower than usual. If you remember, yeah, they usually are in the mid 30s. And you know, they only had 29 shots in this game, but yeah, they led, you know, every single period, you know, First period, nine shots. Second period, seven. Third period, again, scoring uh, two goals. They had a 13 shots. You know, again, 29 total. And not giving New York a lot of chances. I think that was really, really important and big in this game. And hopefully they continue can continue that heading into Detroit. But yeah, we'll talk about that more tomorrow. But again, we did get here from Rod after the game against Islanders, and this is what Rod had to say. Rod, Brady Shea just called this probably the team's best win of the season. Given the situation and players stepping up, what did you see tonight? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, just a great effort. Uh, I just, uh, I'm just really proud of the group, to be quite honest. You know, obviously we're missing a ton of good quality players that we count on every night and other guys just it wasn't that we stepped up I just think everybody just played really well and understood what we had to do to win this game and pretty much did it. Peter Kochetkov telling his second NHL shutout what did you see from him? I didn't see much which is great you know to be honest I mean that's one of those games where you I don't know we gave up too many grade eight chances maybe one in the first I, and I love the third period I just love that you know we're up by one 
and just kind of put the hammer down and, and just kept playing our game. And um, So anyway, it was it was solid two points for sure. Stephen Mason looked like he was almost finding a home there, rotating in with Stahl and Harnuck. Did you right. like what you saw to him tonight? Yeah, everybody. And, you know, you, you play with those two guys, you know, I think, you know, not that anyone can play with them, but it's, uh, it's you know, if you work hard and you do the right things, that, that's the kind of line that, you know, can have a lot of success, obviously. So he was good. You know, everyone was good to him. Nine of ten possible points through the last five board games. What's the importance of having that consistency at this yeah. point in the season? Well, you said it. That, that's the big word, consistency. We want to have that all year. Obviously, we're in a real tough stretch um, with the schedule and the travel and still continues on, you know, and then with the injuries. So I, I'm really proud of the group. Thanks, Rod. Thanks, Rod. Yeah, so... Obviously, Rod, you know, echoing you know, a lot of stuff that Brady said, you know, best game of the year so far. Piotr looking really good. And, you know, yeah, you know, he was right. You know, they did uh, they did their job. You know, it wasn't necessarily someone stepping up. It was everyone going out there and doing their job and giving a good effort. And that's been, you know, a criticism some that I've had, you know, this season of it feels like, you know, sometimes they don't. They don't put the effort in and, you know, in that third period of really just hammering it home and getting and finishing the job, playing that full 60 minutes. And that's what they did here. And they played a good team game. They didn't rely on, you know, just a handful of guys, you know, brought up Stefan Nason of how well he played, you know, with Stahl and Martinuk. Kind of makes you wonder, you know, if uh, Faust, isn't back um you know in this next game do you still slot him right there or what do you do and we'll talk more about that here in a minute you know with some practice updates from today but you know they they've gotten nine of 12 or nine of 10 possible points on the road in their past few road games which is big like you heard rod say consistency is it's what's carrying them right now because they've They've had some stinkers on the road. They've gotten lucky to get to overtime in some of these games. And, you know, again, nine of 10 possible points. And, you know, looking at you know their standings right now, they're sitting at second in the Metro division right now behind uh, New Jersey, you know, with 40, who has uh, 43 points, you know, 21, five and one record. You know, the Hurricanes, you know, they're, you know, they're being consistent right now, which is good yeah, of coming out of that stretch where they just were looking bad. You, you know, that in November on that five game skid. And even before that, yeah, there were some times where they just were not, it, it won't it. <laughs> and, you know, they're being, they're playing consistent right now and they're getting points, whether it's regulation or whether it's a win or an overtime, they're getting points, which I think is, that's important because, you know, Pittsburgh's, you know, right there behind us, you know, also at 36 points, you know, 16, 8, and 4. You know, they're right there. And, yeah, obviously the playoffs aren't starting, you know, anytime soon. But, you know, you, I've said it before, you're not always going to have 2018, 2019, of uh, where you can be second to last in the league, or in St. Louis's case, last in the league, and then bounce back make the playoffs and, you know, go to the conference final or in St. Louis's case, win the Stanley Cup. That's not always going to happen. So you don't want to fall down too much. And right now they're playing consistent. They're getting points, which I think is really darn good because also you look at the wild card spots, Islanders and uh, are right there in that first spot, you know, 34 points. The Rangers right there behind them at 33 points. Again, it, it's a tight little race right there. So, and then right on the outside, you know, Detroit, Washington, 32 points, Florida with 30. So, you know, it's tight. Yeah. Again, the playoffs aren't starting right now, but it's such a tight race. You know, you don't want to fall too far behind. And it's, I think the hurricanes, they, they're doing for the most part, everything right. And, you know, like I said, they played 11, seven, they stepped up really well in that game and they put some of those 11 to seven uh worries to bed i just hope 
the next time, if that is tomorrow against Detroit if, or whenever it may be this season, that's the kind of effort we get. Win or lose, you know, I just want them to show up and go out there and give the effort, play that full six minutes, play a team game. But they did have practice today, and we do have a couple little updates coming out of that, and we will dive into that right after this quick break, folks. Now, folks, this episode is also brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for your sports betting info, stats, and news and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. They've got you covered at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Now, folks, we did get uh, a couple updates out of practice today. And you know, that was, you know, with Jesper Faust. Uh, Rod Brandmore said, you know, prior to the game against the Islanders that he wasn't concerned long term about that and today you know he said that Foss may be good to go tomorrow and that we could see 12 forwards again so maybe we see Nazan on that third line with Martinuk installed maybe we don't we'll just have to see Aho was not practicing Foss also wasn't practicing today Seth Jarvis, for the most part, seemed to be fine. He did uh, miss a good chunk of the second period uh, due to a you know, brief you know, upper body injury. You know, and then the Hurricanes were down to just 10 forwards. But, you know, they, you know, I think that the Hurricanes are getting there slowly. They're dealing with a lot of injuries right now. And obviously, Kasha's skating, uh, Freddie's skating, but, you know, those guys not anytime soon. Uh, to come back same with uh no timetable so far on him and you know it's obvious you know with aho it is a lower body injury so i haven't heard anything of what it could possibly be um i just hope that it isn't a long term issue uh you know because they are they're gonna need him and you know they're gonna need Freddie and they're going to need Foss. They're going to need Pacioretty whenever he comes back, Kasha, and they're going to need all these guys whenever they come back. So it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, in terms of Ajo's injury. Again, not a whole lot to go off of right now other than he wasn't practicing and it's lower body. Not a whole lot to go off of there. So we'll obviously just stay up to date on that. Whenever we get news, we'll talk about it. But uh, one thing it does that I am slightly curious about is, you know, heading into this game against Detroit, are they going to uh, recall another forward just in case, you know, so you don't have to go 11-7. They recalled Max Lejoie ahead of that Islanders game, and, you know, that's why they rolled 11-7 there, but all right, you know, if you aren't 100% sure about Jesper Foss, are you going to bring someone up? You know, you, I, I said before, you know, Ryan Dezingle, are you bringing him up? Are you, or who are you going to bring up in that case? But again, as of this recording, as of little after one in the afternoon, I haven't heard anything or seen anything as far as them calling someone up. I honestly... With you know Brendan Moore saying that Foss should be or may be good to go for tomorrow, I wouldn't expect any sort of recall from Chicago. I, I if he's not, I would just say they'll probably go eleven seven again and basically roll with what we saw uh, the other nights against New York, but. Ultimately, that's just something we're going to have to wait and see on again. Not not a whole lot you know, to go off of these injuries. You know, again, Foss, you know, his was undisclosed as to what was going on with him. We don't don't even know what whether it was upper body, lower body, core, whether he was just sick. 
uh, but I feel like they, you know, part of me feels like they would have just said it, he was sick. Uh, but then again, also it's the NHL and they just can say undisclosed, you know, so we'll just have to wait and see, you know, in terms of these injuries, Foss, Aho, Anderson, Kasha, Patch Ratty, uh, all of them. We're just going to have to wait and see, you know, you, with all these guys, you don't want to rush it and rush them coming back too soon, getting hurt again, and then being out again that time you know, even longer, potentially making the injury worse. But we'll talk about all that stuff whenever we get more information on it. And in the next episode, we will talk to you about tomorrow's game against the Detroit Red Wings. Should be a fun game because, like I said, Detroit is a game that is right outside of the playoff bubble again yeah playoffs aren't starting right now but they're in that mix and they got something to play for right now and they're being competitive which for detroit it's pretty darn good considering where they've been the past few years and in the meantime make sure you are following the show on twitter and instagram at lo underscore hurricanes myself on twitter at jared ellis underscore 96 and i will talk to you guys in tomorrow's episode where we preview that game against the detroit red wings